The NBA playoffs are back, and unlike March Madness, the best team on the entire playoff bracket is actually going to win. Barring injury, with the best of seven series, winning one game on accident is no longer a big deal for any team. And although more than half of the league makes the playoffs, two-thirds if you count the play -in, only a few teams actually have what it takes to win it all. Believe it or not, NBA basketball is so predictable that we might as well be watching a Fast and Furious movie. So I'll give you each team that have what you need to win the Larry O'Brien trophy and a few wild cards that could maybe make history. Because we play the game for a reason, even if we basically know how they're going to end. To make my list as a contender, you've got to pass two tests because these two things have been true for every single NBA champion except one since 1980. And the only team that ever broke the rules passed the first test and technically used the loophole on the second one. First, you have to win at least 52 games in the regular season to have a legitimate chance at winning a title. The D. Wade and Shaq Miami Heat team in 2006 won 52 games, and they were the worst team to win a title since 1995. And the second test, you need to have at least one NBA MVP, or at least a former Finals MVP, on your team if you're actually going to win it all. No team since 1980 has actually pulled it off without one. The Detroit Pistons in 2004 are the only team to break this rule, but they had the Defensive Player of the Year and four players who were basically in their prime because they were all All-Stars at some point near that championship run. And remember, many teams are good enough to win a playoff series, even if they're not able to win the whole thing. So don't shoot the messenger for keeping it 100 with you because I'm a Knicks fan and I already know that they're on borrowed time. The Milwaukee Bucks are the best team in the NBA, and I'm not just talking about the eye test. They had the best record during the regular season, and they already won a championship two years ago, and most of the key players on that team are still major pieces of this one. It is not a fluke that the Bucks are the best team, because their front office did everything right when they built it. To create an NBA champion, you need to make highly educated guesses about the trajectory of an NBA player's career, starting with hitting the jackpot in the draft and then wheeling and dealing your way from there, which is exactly what the Bucks did. They have four international players on their team, led by the Greek freak himself. But amongst their American-born players, only Brooke Lopez and Jeru Holiday were legitimately expected by high school basketball scouts to be major contributors at the NBA level. They were ranked 10th and 4th overall in their recruiting classes. And they were also followed by Bobby Portis and Grayson Allen, who were both 16th and 21st when they came out of high school. Beyond those names are players who were at one point 4- and 3-star basketball recruits. They were never expected to make it to the league. The Bucks are the kind of team that nobody pays attention to. Because, for the most part, we really have never paid attention to their players, even before they got drafted. Remember, Giannis Antetokounmpo might be the league's best player now, but he was passed up on by every single team in the lottery in the draft. If that is not hitting the jackpot, I don't know what is. Yet, if there was a textbook on how to build an NBA champion, the Bucks seem to have read it cover to cover. They have a former MVP on their team, who's arguably the best player on the planet in Giannis. And that's a big deal, because you can't win a title without one of those guys. But they also have fringe all-stars to surround him in the starting lineup. Drew Holiday, Brooke Lopez, and Chris Middleton have all been all-stars at different points in their careers. Every single one of them is an above-average defender for their position. And just like LeBron's champion Cavs team, anybody else who they actually let on the court is an above average outside shooter for their position as well. The only exception to that 
if maybe Javon Carter, but he the perimeter lockdown player, so he will get a pass on that, literally. The Bucks are a team that we'd rather not focus on because they have a lot of players who we were never that familiar with. Practically their entire careers have been proving that they are better than we thought they were, almost player for player. The Bucks were already NBA champions not too long ago, so they remember it, even if we tend to forget it, that they have everything that you actually need to become an NBA champion, and then some. The Denver Nuggets are the best team in the Western Conference, or at least that is what their record would indicate. But for many people, they are not even the favorites to win the West. Believe it or not, it doesn't really matter if the Nuggets are the favorite, because they are the only team in the West that has what it takes to win the championship. I'm not saying that they will win the title or even that Denver will win the West. But if they do not, the last 40 years of NBA basketball teaches us that whoever actually does will just become a sacrificial lamb for whatever team makes it out of the East. And this is why. Cause the Nuggets are the only legit contender in the Western Conference, whether or not we want to admit it. The Denver Nuggets are a team that is really good, but seems to leave you wanting more. And for the most part, it has always been like that for all of their players. They have two international players on their team, both of which were second round draft picks. But one of them is now a two time NBA MVP. So it's safe to say nobody saw that coming. And the rest of their team is filled with players who were actually supposed to contribute in the NBA. High school basketball scouts got it right, sort of, when it comes to the Nuggets. Because players like Bruce Brown, Thomas Bryant, Contavious Caldwell Pope, and even DeAndre Jordan were all ranked inside of the top 30 recruits when they came out of high school, which basically means they were supposed to become role players in the NBA someday. But they also have players like Jamal Murray, Aaron Gordon, and Michael Porter Jr. Their recruitment rankings were 10, 4, and 2 when they left high school. Those guys are good but perhaps not good enough, because none of them have ever made an all-star team, and they've had more than a few years in order to figure it out. Denver has good players, but they might not be as good as they need to be to actually win a title. And that is the real reason why everybody is skeptical of the Nuggets. But they play winning basketball throughout the regular season, and they have the player that you need to get them over the hump in Nikola Jokic. He's way better now than he was ever supposed to be. And at this point, he's basically invented the position of the point center, because he's probably the best passing big man in history. And they have a lot of shooters for him to pass it to. But without a legitimate second star player, it's hard to believe that the Nuggets will actually pull this off. But stranger things have happened. Denver has everything that you technically need to become an NBA champion but they sure enough don't have everything that you want. So let's just hope for their sake that the bare necessities is enough for them to get it done. The Philadelphia 76ers are a franchise that knows what it means to be disappointed. They drafted Joel Embiid, and then he missed two full seasons. And I'm afraid to even bring up what happened with Ben Simmons. But all of that is behind us now. Could the Sixers have a healthy Joel Embiid, fresh off of an NBA scoring title? And they were able to flip Ben Simmons into James Harden, who is a former MVP himself. Even if you don't believe in the process, it doesn't really matter, because the 76ers are the only team that is supposed to win the NBA Finals. The only problem is that it doesn't always feel like they will. And this is why. Historically, to become a champion, you have to win enough games in the regular season to put yourself in position to do it. That's 52 wins, and the Sixers passed that test. And you also need at least one NBA MVP on your team, but preferably two. And the Sixers have basically accomplished that with Joel Embiid and James Harden. Simply put, the Sixers should be an even better team on paper than the Bucks because the players on their roster reflect that. 
Believe it or not, seven of the players on the Sixers were ranked in the top 20 basketball recruits when they came out of high school. So scouts will tell you that they always knew James Harden, Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and Tobias Harris would become major contributors to an NBA championship run one day. And that was when they were 17 years old. Only three of the American born players on their roster were not ranked in the top 100 basketball recruits when they came out of high school. DeAnthony Melton is the only consistent rotation player who wasn't, and he was a four-star recruit. To quote Joe Hampton of Last Chance U, the Sixers are a team of first-rate hoopers. So if they lose an NBA playoff series, it won't be for a lack of talent. Yet the 76ers feel like a throwback team, modernized for the new NBA. Kind of like a Toyota Camry from 2023. That's just a modernized version of what they did in 1998. The car still serves the same function today as it did back then, but with way more features. Embiid is a big man in a small ball league who is a dominating force. He's basically this generation's version of Shaquille O'Neal. But James Harden needs to show up big for the Sixers to win a title. But at this point, he plays much more like Penny Hardaway than he does Kobe Bryant. The big man, bigger guard tandem, works pretty well to win championship rings. And it works specifically well when both players are MVP caliber talents. The Sixers check all the boxes, including having quality role players, who are perhaps even better than we like to give them credit for. But they are still not the best team in the East, or even the second best and their seeding reflects that. So whatever happens in the NBA playoffs is entirely on them because up until now, they have been underachievers throughout the entire season. But all is forgiven if they actually win the championship because they only have themselves to blame if they don't. To win an NBA championship over the past 40 years, your team has had to do two things win at least 52 games in the regular season, and have at least one NBA MVP, or at least an NBA Finals MVP, on your team to give yourself a chance. But this season, the list of teams that actually make that list is incredibly short. The Bucks, Sixers, and Nuggets are the only teams that qualify. I don't blame you if that doesn't sit well with you. So maybe this season will be the first since the 2004 Detroit Pistons that the rules will be broken. And if so, these are the most likely candidates to actually do it. The Boston Celtics are no stranger to winning. They have more NBA championships than any team in history. And Kevin Garnett has already taught us that anything is possible. They've made the playoffs every single year since Jason Tatum arrived. And it is ironic that he also wears the Jordan brand because the Michael Jordan Bulls have basically given the Celtics a blueprint for how to build their team. You take two of the NBA's top wing players and surround them with perimeter shooting and defense. The Celtics have enough wins to qualify as a contender with 57. So we know that they could technically pull this off. The only problem is they've never actually done it yet because they don't have an actual MVP. Jason Tatum is as close as you can get without actually being one. And Jalen Brown is his co-star. It's fitting that he was the third ranked recruit when he came out of high school. And Jalen Brown was fourth because to this point, they've been about as good as advertised. And Tatum is just a little bit better. We could talk about Marcus Smart's defense or even Malcolm Brogdon's sixth man of the year campaign, but all that really matters is that Jason Tatum has never been an NBA MVP. And historically speaking, that is enough to mean that the Celtics probably ain't gonna win it this year. The next four teams all have the same problem. They have a former MVP or finals MVP, and some of them even have both, but they haven't won enough games this season to be legit contenders. None of them have actually won more than 45, which is a far cry away from 52. The Suns, Clippers, Warriors, and Lakers all finished the season within two games of each other. 
They even have a player that they can count on when the going gets tough. But that probably won't matter because history is trying to tell us that their teams just won't be good enough beyond them to get the job done. If I were you, I would aim low and avoid disappointment, but root for these teams if you want to. The Phoenix Suns plus Kevin Durant haven't even played 10 games together in the regular season. And historically speaking, that won't win a championship. The Suns won't have home court advantage outside of the first round of the playoffs. And to some people, Kevin Durant is the real MVP. But that's not important if the team can't show consistency, which they haven't done all year. And if you check their bench, good luck with that. Nothing against Devin Booker or Chris Paul, but if you're betting on the Suns, you're doing it because you have blind faith in Kevin Durant. And that's about all. Kawhi Leonard has proven he can get you a title back in Toronto. But he's playing for the LA Clippers, and they don't have Paul George, and they're nowhere near as good as the Raptors were when they won the title. If the roster they have now was healthy together for 70% of the season, then maybe we'd be having a different conversation. And Russell Westbrook is a former NBA MVP, but he's not on the Clippers to be that guy. He's playing for the veterans minimum, so any production you get out of him is way above the asking price. And even with Paul George, their record indicates the Clippers would be the longest of long shots. The Warriors might be defending champions, but they are not the same team they were a year ago. It could just be a slight decline in production from players like Draymond Green and Klay Thompson, but a slight decline is enough for them to fall all the way off. And the Warriors couldn't buy a win on the road this season, which is a problem considering they don't have home court advantage for the entire playoffs. Aside from key players on their roster, nothing about this Warriors team resembles the ones that won NBA championships. So the odds of the Warriors winning it all are slim to none. The Lakers have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, which is enough to give them a chance. To be clear, that is the only thing that you would be putting faith in, because the Lakers don't do anything else that is consistent with winning a championship. Comparing this Lakers team to any of the Cavs teams that LeBron took to the finals is unfair, because this version of LeBron is a lot older and therefore not quite as good at carrying the team on his back as he used to be. And that is no shade, because that was supposed to be Anthony Davis's job. But we're not sure if he's going to be consistently in the lineup for the entirety of the playoffs. There's almost no reason to mention any of the other Lakers players by name. They haven't given us a reason to. Malik Beasley is the only other player on the team who has ever won a playoff series. Unless we're counting Tristan Thompson, who signed a deal right before the playoffs. And he's the fourth string center. You can ride with King James if you want to, but the car that they gave him to drive flat out doesn't have any brakes on it. To win an NBA title, a lot of things have to go your way. And the last 40 years of NBA basketball is teaching us that only three teams are actually playing for the title. Everyone else might as well be there to make it look interesting, but Kevin Garnett just might be a prophet because who knows? Anything is possible. Believe what you want to believe, but history has already made it clear which teams they are betting on. I'm Coach Rob, and thank you so much for watching this video. And if you want to see more content like this, then please like and subscribe.